Here, of course, is George Henry and Mary Emma Chisholm, who were the uh, children of some very wealthy and successful parents. Uh, as far as, uh, unfortunately, they died young and left seven boys without anyone to help them except Ken Bennett. Ken Bennett was the one who remained and sold the house and took care of the younger boys, which was Fred and my, my father and Gordon and, uh, and Sid. Uh, Hod was away at the time. Hod was in the uh, army. He went to the National Guard and fought in Mexico against Pancho Villa in 1914, and then was in World War II. The other four boys were in World War II also: Gordon, Fred, uh, and my World father. World War One. World War One. Oh yeah, that's right. There's a difference. There. <laughs> this is George Henry Bennett when uh, he was uh, about six years old on the right, and when he was a young man on the left. Uh, this is when he married Mary Emma Bennett on, uh, this was Thanksgiving, I think it was about 17, eight, eight, something like that, I'm not sure right now. Uh, I don't know where she got the hairdo, but, uh, and this is Robert Bruce Chisholm Jr. on the right. Uh, he was uh, the son of Robert Bruce Chisholm and lived uh, ultimately in Oakland, California. I'm sorry, I didn't get the date for those. I didn't. Them. They're in the literature. How come the Bennett? How come the Bennett don't have mustaches anymore? Yeah. How come the Bennett? Uh, George uh, George Bennett was a very handsome man. Uh, he did a little bit of work, as far as I can uh, find out. He he had a hardware business in Chicago for a short time. Then he retired to Geneva after he married uh, Mary Emma. Uh, and I think for the most part, uh, most of their life. Uh, they lived as uh, well-to-do people on money that they got from their parents, as far as I can figure out. Mm -hmm. George, like we all should. George, we should. <laughs> yeah, we all should. Great bit of tradition. There are, people, there, are, there, are, there are people in this room that can make that same statement. <laughs> 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 George and uh, Mary Emma Chisholm in later life, yeah. uh, probably not too long before he died. Rufus, Rufus looked just like Mary Emma. Yeah, Rufus. There was, this was their first house, which was a farmhouse south of Geneva called the Shaw Farm, and uh, they lived there first, but most of the time they lived in this house on South Batavia Avenue from 1894 until 1918. And uh, my father was very much impressed by his father. He said he, he bred coach horses, and they sold these coach horses to the wealthy families of Chicago, like the Carsons and the Peary's and the Fields and all that type of thing. They had beautiful horses. And they were, they had, there was a large barn to the left, which you can't see in the picture. These are some pictures. This is the house that appears today on the left. And on the right is a picture that was taken of the interior of the house uh, around the turn of the century. Christopher, are you okay? Mm -hmm. Want to come over here? Uh, that was the house in Geneva. <laughs> yeah. This the house is still there. I all I can yeah. say is I wish I could afford to buy it back. Yeah, wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> it's on a, about a two or three a yeah. couple of acres of land, and it's, uh, it's a it overlooks spot. the Cave Avenue. It's yeah. the very best part of Geneva. The Bogart's on it now. We did. Unfortunately, it, it, there was a serious fire there, but the damages uh, were all repaired uh, in good shape, so that it looks today as good as it ever did. This was the family of George and Mary Emma Chisholm. I've never seen this picture. And uh, for, those, for those who think they're changing too many diapers, can you imagine? <laughs> She, hey, Dad, she had help. <laughs> uh, that, Mary Emma Chisholm, of course, is on the left, and uh, uh, I believe that's Hod in the center. Of course, that's George. Uh, that's Ken, Ken on the right. Uh, the two are standing. 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 Uh, the two small boys, the one on uh, George's uh, lap is either my well, now that must be Gordon. That's Gordon. Uh, Sid is on the lower right, and, and my brother and uh, my father and Fred Bennett are uh, the twins are sitting in the chair on the left. 
Sid became a, a was a, an outstanding high school uh, football player, and he was a member of the Bears. He he and was hired and got together with George Hallis when the Bears were formed. He was, for years he used to get seats on the 50-yard line. Uh, he had no children. Uh, Gordon, of course, we talked about, and uh, Ken, or I mean uh, Fred's uh, son Dave, unfortunately, isn't here. Uh, this the four the boys were sort of divided into two groups: the three older boys and the four younger boys, the, which included the twins. And uh, the four younger boys are here with their horse and pony. This is a uh, this is a, a, a view of one of these stereoptic photos. I wish I had the projector to use with it or the the viewer to look with it. But uh, this was a, the home that Mary Emma Chisholm came from. This is a large home in in uh, Elgin, which really? has been torn down to build an apartment building on the site of. But at any rate, they always called it Castle Comfort. And there is a lot of poems with, that she has that talk about Castle Comfort. This is a very early shot of Geneva around before the turn of the century. The mill is on the left, the pancake house is on the left, and that large building on the right is a glucose factory. This was a Pope Brothers glucose factory, and that building exploded and burned down in the early 1900s, and the company then moved to Argo, and their present name is Corn Products. Uh, this was the mill in the early days with being serviced by horses. This is the mill uh, later on. You see on the right there's a uh, what we call the feed mill, which was for grinding corn. Uh, the main mill uh, ground mostly wheat when it was available, various kinds of wheat. And this is the shot that was taken even later after the bridge was put in. That bridge was built about in the early 1920s. And this was when they were building the bridge. You can see that. This is one of the trucks. This is another one of the trucks, a Packer truck, and it's got the record. Can anybody read that from? Travel 980 miles in 30 working days from April 26th to May 31st, 1912. Delivering 403 tons of flour, 403 tons of flour, and grain. He's okay. He's okay. Look so here, you're up on a gallon of gasoline, and 13 and a quarter gallons of oil. How about that? That was with a bit of cool mention. It was called Seven Brothers. Later, uh, after the mill had been closed because of business conditions, it didn't ever go bankrupt, it was just closed because it was no longer a profitable business. Uh, the mill owned the rights, the water rights, half the water rights to the uh, dam. The dam developed some first problems and there was a big breach in the dam. At that point, the, uh, the owners of the mill, Annie May, uh, gave the water rights to the city and they rebuilt the dam and today it's very beautiful. It's when was this recently. taken? This was taken in about 1955, I think, I'll have to check. This was the uh, one of the, the uh, tail, this was part of the head race on the other side here. This building generated power that was transported across the river on a cable. This is the, uh, the race, the mill race. The water from above the dam came through the gates at the other end, uh, flowed down this channel and then went through the mill in the basement and then dropped through turbines that were located at the bottom. There were three Francis Vane turbines in the bottom and they generated about 150 horsepower. So with all this investment, you get 150 horsepower, which you can get from a motor, of course, today that's about as big as a barrel or a little bit less. But this was uh, a very, very dangerous <coughs> place. It was about six or seven feet deep. And uh, the problem we always had is that this was a, a learning ground. This was a swimming pool in the summer. And uh, one of the big efforts that we had to make was to keep people out of there for fear another person would get drowned. People were taught to swim in here, and I almost uh, experienced it, but people were taught to swim in here by having an older brother take them to the edge and throw them in. And they had to swim to get out. Did you do that with your brother Gordon? No, but uh, it almost happened to me, I'll tell you that. 